Today I will be telling you everything you need to know to make small blanket stitches for applique on your sewing machine. Hi there, my name is Irene and you are watching the Shiridu channel. Today I'm going to make a quilt block and do some applique on my sewing machine. And the block that I'm making is for the bead blocks that we do with our quilt bee. It's a kind of a round robin project, but then you don't add a round to something, but you make a block for someone else. And in this video, which I'm going to link somewhere in the screen, um, I explain all about the project and also um, tell you what I decided on as a theme for my blocks. But today I get to make the first block for someone else. And this is by Madalon and she made an awesome uh, idea board. So from this I get to uh, make a block. And this is the first block that she made. How cute is that? It's a clock with nines and a little, uh, is it called gnome, in uh, the center. It's super cute. And the theme on here is uh, the nine is just fine and storybook. So the blocks um, should be some somewhat storytelling or um, yeah, there should be something interesting in there, I guess. Um, so um, it's a theme that can go many different ways. I thought about doing just a nine patch with um, interesting blocks so not just squares but tiny patterns or something that was an idea that popped up um, and there were a few more but I am going to go with uh, an umbrella and raindrops uh, shaped as nines because in Dutch uh, when you say it rains you say het regent uh, and nine the number nine is called negen so I thought let's make that instead of het regent, uh, het negent. So instead of regen, you use the word nine. I thought maybe that's the fun thing to do. So <laughs> I'm going to go with an umbrella and raindrops shaped as nine. So the umbrella I'm going to make from my uh, Shiridu Assembler book, which is a book with more than 35 uh, foundation paper piecing patterns. So from that, I'm going to make the umbrella. And then I'm going to do uh, applique of the raindrops on my machine. So first I need to pick out some uh, fabrics. Uh, so I have the idea board over here. And I'm just going to go with these uh, colors and also look at uh, the first block to, uh, to try and match some of those in there. Uh, and here I have my boxes of fabrics. Uh, in this one there's a lot of whites and uh, also some fabrics with uh, prints so maybe that could be nice to uh, incorporate in the block so here there are a lot of animals so maybe I could uh, fuzzy cut some of them and also applique those on the blocks but I guess I'm going to do that all the way in the end so first I'm going to decide on the color for the umbrella and for the background Okay, so this is going to be it. I decided and changed my mind and decided and changed my mind, but um, I thought since the theme is um, storybook, this fabric was really nice because of all the um, word clouds. And um, then I wanted something that contrasted with the blue because this is pretty dark as a background, but I guess it could work out really nicely when you have a contrasting umbrella. And then this light fabric is going to be uh, the handle of the umbrella. I saw these little parts and I thought that could work really cute as a handle for the umbrella. So I'm going to try to fussy gut that. And uh, yeah, this is going to be it. And then I can do some more with the other colors um, uh, in the uh, nine droplets. So in the uh, uh, raindrops shaped as nines. 
So I decided on the fabric. Now it's time to make the foundation paper piecing block. And I have a tutorial on that in a different video, which I will link somewhere in the screen. And uh, so if you want to know the technique that I'm using, uh, just check that out. I'm going to fast forward and make the block so then I can show you how I'm going to applique the raindrops. So here is my finished block. I made it quite long because then I can make a lot of rain droplets on the top. Um, and I think it's really nice. It's uh, contrasting the yellow with the blue, so I guess that works. And uh, what I'm going to do now is use um, double-sided sticky iron-on paper. I don't know what it's called in English. Um, but on the one side of the paper, you can draw something. So I drew a nine. And then I'm going to just iron it on uh, a fabric. So I'm going to take this green fabric for the first one to try. And then you will iron it on the back side of the fabric. Let me do that. So when it's on there, uh, you can just go ahead and uh, cut it out. And here we have our first nine, but I forgot that you have to draw it mirrored on your transfer paper. Let's redo that. Yay, there we go. That's a real nine. Um, so then when you've done this, you still have the paper on the back and a nice fabric on the front and then you can just uh, place it somewhere where you like on your fabric. So to secure it over here, you will peel away the paper on the back and then there's the sticky side uh, that will become sticky as when you um, uh, heat it up with your iron. Um, that's on the back of the fabric. So just place it somewhere where you want it to be and give it a press. But what I would like to do for this project is first uh, cut out all the nines and then assemble them nicely on the block. Um, so uh, first I'm going to lay everything out and then I'm going to set it with my iron. Because after you set it with your iron, it's hard to uh, pull it loose again. So there are all the nines cut out and I placed them around the umbrella. I already removed all the paper on the back side, so now I can just press it and then they will all be um, secured in place. Okay, there we go. And this will be secure for the numbers to stay on. But to nicely finish the uh, edges, to um, um, prevent them from fraying, uh, I'm going to stitch with a small blanket stitch around all the nines. This is where the hovering function of my machine comes in really handy. So to get started with my applique, I first need to change my stitch plate because uh, the straight stitch plate is now still in. So I'm just going to remove that and I'm going to put in my normal stitch plate. And then also I'm going to uh, switch out the foot. So this is my quilting patchwork foot. And I'm going to use the open toe food, number 20C. So there we go. That has a open toe, so I can really nicely see what I'm going to do. And as a thread, I still have um, a white Orifil thread in here, a 50 weight, I think. And um, I'm just going to leave that white um, because also the details in this fabric are white and um, I don't have thread that matches all of the colors so I guess uh, just going with white will also make them pop um, and it's going to work for all the nines. Now I need to set the stitches on my machine. So here we have two um, blanket stitches and now I just want to see what the difference is between them. Ah, the number 1330 is a double one and 1329 is a single one. Um, so I just want a single one, so I guess this one is uh, good. 
and then I need to tell my machine that there is a, just a normal stitch blade and not a straight stitch blade anymore and now we see here the uh, stitch and I'm just going to try it out to see the size of the stitch Okay, so I played around with it a little bit and uh, this little stitch over here focus yes this little stitch over here is my favorite so it turns out nicely with these settings um, so I'm going to use this uh, on my quilt let's do some um, actual sewing oh yeah and one other setting I'm going to use is I'm going to use the needle down function and then in the settings um, I'm going to set my needle down to hover um, so my foot is going to ho hover when the needle is still in the fabric I'm going to start with lowering my foot and it will hover above the fabric and I can lower my needle and the needle should go in on the edge of the fabric so there we go and as you can see the foot hovers so that I can pivot uh, my fabric and then I'm just going to start and each time I stop my foot will hover over the fabric so that I can turn if I want to really liking that function so I'm just going to go really slow and now I'm in the corner so actually I'm going to make one more stitch and I'm just going to hand turn this one so I get exactly in that spot over there now I'm going to make a straight stitch one more and back there we go and now it's going to do straight stitch again forward yes perfect and now actually I want to stay on the same location but it should do uh, a stitch forward now so I'm just going to hand rotate that stitch and now I know I, it's going to go sideways again Need to return, turn it, and now just every other stitch I will uh, turn it my work a little bit, and then um, I can follow the outline of the nine really nicely. So now I'm going to finish it off on the same spot as I started and I'm doing that by letting my machine do a few stitches on the same spot. And there is the outside of my first nine. So now I need to do the inside and then it's done. So with this small inner circle, you want to turn your work almost on every point. So when I do one stitch straight, then now I'm going to do the stitches to the left. And after I did do those, I'm going to turn my work again. So now I do one stitch, turn my work a little bit, do those stitches, turn my work a little bit, one stitch, oops. You don't want to turn your work when um, your machine just made a stitch to the side because when I would do turn now my work then the stitch won't uh, finish in the same place as it went so I need to turn my work when it's in this place 
do one stitch, turn it a little bit, stitch it to the side, turn it, one stitch, turn it a little bit. And there we go, there is my first nine. I think it's nice, but still a tiny bit wobbly. Um, but well, it was my first nine, so uh, let's move on to the next one. When you don't have this hovering function on your machine, I didn't have that on my last machine, but still could you applique work, of course. Um, you could just use a knee lift if that is delivered with your machine or um, be stitching with your hand um, close to the lift of your foot so every time you want to stop you can lift your foot a little bit and then continue stitching. You just need to go really slow if you want to make all the curves look really nice and smooth, take your time. And I guess taking your time is just a really good thing. We all do this for fun, right? So um, it should be relaxing and kind of meditative to uh, enjoy every stitch. Just go slow and enjoy the work instead of only enjoying the finished product. Ta-da! There is the second nine, and I like it. I think this is going to be a super fun block. So there's my second nine, and I really like it. So I think overall this is going to be a very fun block. When I'm making the inner circle from this really tiny one, I'm setting my stitch length to uh, 150. Uh, so that my stitches, so this straight stitch, what I'm going to make now, is super tiny, or at least a lot smaller than what it was. So when I turn my work now, I have to turn it less. And it's going to make a stitch more often than when your stitch length is uh, set on two. And that way you get more stitches in the inner circle more side stitches on them. and that I think that just looks nicer on the really tiny circles and again you want to turn on each stitch so on this stitch you want to turn and then you go inwards and then you want to turn and what you want to make sure is that when you do the straight stitch you want to turn your work in such a way that the stitch that you're going to make to the left now it's going to be perpendicular to the circle. So see, that one you just made, then you turn your work, one stitch. And then I'm going to turn it again to make the stitch to the side go perpendicular to the inner circle. Turn it, stitch, turn it so that the stitch to the side is perpendicular or somewhat perpendicular. So this is the circle that I made before and there the stitch length was the same as the stitches on the outside but as you can see when you're doing the inside work you lose a lot of those inner uh, side stitches because you turn your work so much. So reducing your stitch length a bit depending on the circle uh, uh, on the diameter of the inner circle you can get better results. And there it is, the finished block. It's all done and I really like how it turned out. I think there's a nice contrast between the umbrella and the background and I also like the details in the handle of the umbrella. So I kind of fuzzy cut that to get some extra texture there. I like it and also the nines as the rain droplets. I'm very curious what uh, Madelon thinks of it. 
so uh, I can't wait to show her. And that is um, my video on how to do applique on your sewing machine. I'm very curious if you're watching this, if you are a hand applique or a machine applique, which, mean, which one you like better. Um, I don't often do applique, I love to just piece my fabrics, but for this block I guess um, appliquing was a perfect method and uh, I love the look that uh, machine applique has and also love to do it so uh, seeing the machine make those stitches uh, I just really like it so um, I hope you like this video and that you learned something uh, if so please give a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next week in a brand new video bye bye